My name is Whitney Battle Baptiste, and I am a professor of anthropology in the Department of Anthropology at UMass Amherst. I am also the director of the W.E.B. Du Bois Center at UMass Amherst. Today, I want to talk to you about the Black Lives Matter movement. Where did it come from? Why was it so powerful? How did it last? And what does it mean today? Black Lives Matter was born from struggle, but also from sadness and grief. The Black Lives Matter movement was born in 2013 after the acquittal of George Zimmerman, the man who pulled the trigger that killed 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. His murder in Sanford, Florida affected a nation. It affected many of us who understood the implications of, black, uh, of police brutality, but did not understand how this could continue to happen over and over again. Black Lives Matter was born from a letter that Alicia Garza, one of the co-founders wrote, that she called a letter, a love letter to black people. And at the end of that letter, the words, our black lives matter. Her good friend and also organizer, Patrice Cullors, decided to hashtag that. And with the help of Opal Tometi, all three black women organizers in their different places came together to create a movement that would be very local in structure with no single head, no single spokesperson. This would be a movement that recognized and understood the unique experiences of black people who are suffering from anti-black racism, including black indigenous and people of color from the LBGTQ community especially in light of the violence against trans Black women and the murders that completely go ignored by our media. Black Lives Matter is strong and is able to be sustained because it is based on local needs. Each chapter is located in a city with organizers who understand the needs of that community. This is why, after the murder of Mike Brown, the Ferguson chapter of Black Lives Matter was able to come directly to aid and begin the protests and to begin the pressure on the folks in Missouri, especially the police. This is what happened in Baltimore after the murder of Freddie Gray behind, in the back of a police van in Baltimore. Yet right now, I think there's a moment in which we need to acknowledge all of us are a little stressed. We've been quarantined, we've been at home. Perhaps we've been reading more, perhaps we've been watching more news. Perhaps we've been afraid of the way in which COVID will affect our futures. And in this moment, we have the murders of Breonna Taylor in her own bed. We have the murder of Rayshawn Brooks, Armad Arbery, both in Georgia, and then eight minutes and 46 seconds in which we saw the life leave the body of George Floyd. It's not just about George Floyd. It's about the fact that we were all in place when this happened. Black Lives Matter and the movement for Black Lives have always been present. Well, at least since 2013. What is happening now is that people are beginning to realize what the definition of anti-Black racism is. Anti-Black racism is about the disproportionately, the disproportionately affected folks that are victim to the carceral state, low economics, education, all of these things have impacted all of us as a nation. And Black Lives Matter and the movement for Black Lives have all been a part, but now and today, because we are still, is why 
we understand that this is a different moment and that all Black Lives Matter. Thank you.